Good morning everybody and welcome to Star Mountain Outdoors and Bushcraft. I'm John and this is Nathan and today we are starting our most epic journey to date, the Colorado Trail. So come on and join us. Colorado Trail. The Colorado Trail is 486 miles in length and it goes from Denver to Durango. It is divided into 28 sections of various lengths. It crosses eight mountain ranges and six national forests. The elevation ranges from 5,500 feet to 13,200 feet at the highest point on the trail. This is my story of an attempted through hike on the Colorado Trail. All right, everybody. We're a little over three miles in to Waterton Canyon, about halfway up the road. And we've come out to this little reservoir. It's really beautiful. We're starting to get into more cliffs. There's some uh, geese on the road up ahead and it's a very hot day. It's a stampede of small horn sheep. There are trout all over the water here. Coming up and catching all kinds of insects. It's awesome to see. There we yep. go. Yeah, it's a big horn sheep. There's one down there as well. Oh, there's another one behind it. All right, everybody. We've got camp set up at Bear Creek as planned. And I'm going to call it a day. Nathan's already taking a nap. We're just going to eat dinner and go to bed and we'll see you in the morning. We started at the Waterton Canyon trailhead and completed a road walk for the first six miles. At the end of the road walk was where we saw bighorn sheep. We passed Lenny's Rest and ended at Bear Creek. Hey, good morning everybody. It's day two. Section one is done. Thank you. 
beautiful day loads and loads of wildflowers along the trail down at this the river crossing was beautiful we stayed there for a couple hours and then hiked a couple more miles into section two where we found a stealth camp here on a on a little saddle so this is where we're going to spend our night i'm going to try to get some night shots but other than that i will see you in the morning have a good one on day two we started from bear creek and climbed up to the top of the ridge followed a ridge for a little while and then switched back down to the south platte river there we took a break for a little while and then climbed up into section two into the burn area and then made camp at the edge of the forest Good morning, everybody. It's 5.30 a.m., day three. All right, everybody, we're on our way this morning. We're in probably the shadiest part of section two, which is notorious for being a hot, dry burn area, and one of the longest water carries, too. We've got about seven more miles from here to get to a water source, which is the fire station near the end of the section. So here we go. I hereby dub thy trail name to be Squeaky. came up to a great rock outcropping where we took a break on this morning. Toward the end of the second burn area, we started getting pretty hot, dry, and dehydrated. Think this guy's looking for us? The wildflowers at the end of this section were spectacular. Nathan's favorite part of the trip was just hanging out at the fire station with the other hikers. After the fire station, we went through some pretty nice thinned areas of forest. We received our first trail magic that day from a gentleman by the name of Papa Nature. Little Scraggy Trailhead was also the end of section two. And almost immediately right after that, we had more trail magic from cavemen. So by the time we got done with day three, we did almost 12 miles. We ended up at a little creek near the curve in the trail at the bottom of the map there. And uh, it was a great place to camp. Good morning, everybody. It's day four on the Colorado Trail. All right, everyone, we're back out on the trail. It's day four. And uh, day three was pretty cool. We completed probably one of the most difficult portions of the trail. We're just gonna cruise along, take it easy. We're only gonna do about 9.5 miles today. We're gonna continue on until we see something cool, a cool view or some wildlife, and I'll try to capture it for you. I think this is just a little past mile 30, just before you cross Morrison Creek on the left hand side there's this big old cave with a huge campsite here it's pretty awesome I wish we would have hiked just a little further and found this last night this would have been a cool place to camp 
Check out this Easter Island head looking rock. Hey, Dum Dum, give me gum gum. Nathan had a butterfly land on him. Buffalo Creek is a beautiful stream. Okay, so we found probably the best campsite of the trip so far. We're next to a little creek down the hill there. We've got a couple of nice tent pads. We did some laundry and we're camped right by this nice meadow. We're about a half mile from the end of section three here. So we're gonna start section four tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to that. All right, it's the end of day four. I'm exhausted. Only did 9.5 today, but uh, that was enough after the day we had yesterday. And uh, I think I'm gonna turn in. So I'll see you all in the morning for day five. Have a good one. We started a little bit past Little Scraggy Campground and ended up just before Rolling Creek Trailhead. It was a pretty uneventful day all in all. Good morning everybody! It's day five. Check this out. It appears that we're coming downhill to a trailhead. I think I said last night that it was only about half a mile to the end of section three, and it looks like we're here. All right, everybody. Time for the morning situational report, if you will. So we started at mile 40 on the trail today and we're going to try to make it to mile 50. Right now we just passed the Rolling Rock Trailhead as you saw and we're heading towards the Lost Creek Wilderness. Anyway that's that's about it. It should be a pretty day. I hear there's lots of aspen through here. Well, let's go check it out. This is cool, there's a nice wide trail here. Love it. Through the lodgepole pine. Oh my God, you never would have believed it. Nathan just stepped into a huge mud hole. It went all the way up to his hip. I can't believe, I mean, it looks rocky in there. Oh my gosh, crazy. I mean, you'd think this is just like part of the trail right here. This is where everybody's been walking. Oh, whoa, I think there's another creek up here where we can wash off. Okay, folks, we just got done with about an hour and a half break at a creek, about five miles into our hike today. And we're starting to hear thunder, so we decided to take off and keep moving. We've got about five more miles to go. We've got our umbrellas ready, just in case we need them. And that's about it. I'll see you on down the trail. Whew. We've been going up this long, steep climb in the Lost Creek Wilderness, trying to get over the hill. Just a little ways that way to Lost Creek, where we're gonna camp for tonight. Whew. It's been a tough climb. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you, I think we finally come up with a trail name for Nathan that's going to stick. Let's call him Bear Wallow, because he fell in the mud. Okay, we've made it to the valley now, and we're gonna hike up this for about, I don't know, for quite a ways tomorrow, I believe. It's obviously raining right now, but not too bad. And uh, we're going to 
try to find a campsite. We're in about another half a mile, I believe. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back, and after the rain, we found this, or during the rain, I should say, we found this little campsite here. Not bad, wouldn't you say? And uh, we just set up a emergency tarp, really. Stayed under it until the rain ended. And now we can set up our tents and everything nice and dry. Worked out pretty well. But the best part is, check out this view. Pretty good view. And we have a dry cooking area. And we're right by a little trailhead here. Man, it just looks miserable out there. I've seen a couple hikers going and filling up their water bottles by the bridge there. It's just kind of stormy and nasty out there right now. All right, everybody. I am most definitely pooped, and it's time to go to bed. Time to say goodbye to day five, and we'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. This was a pretty eventful day. We finished zone three, Nate fell in the mud about right there, and then we had a steep climb and we made it to camp in the rain. Good morning everybody, and welcome to day six of our Colorado through hike adventure. Yeah, it got a little cold last night. As you can see from the frost down by the stream here. Good thing we camped a little higher. But wow, what a beautiful morning. everybody I think it's time for morning update we got a late start this morning because um, we were drying things out on a closed line at camp after all the rain last night you know our rain flies to our tent and a tarp and also um, some people that we've been hiking kind of along with uh, or close by um, they came to camp and we're drying things out too because we have such a nice place to do that and it's just been kind of a fun morning we're talking with those guys and so we didn't get on trail till 9 30 and now we are heading up the north fork of lost creek it's a nice big valley very pretty nice easy hike um and we're just having a good time. We're trying to make it to about a little over the 60 mile mark today, maybe about 62, 63 mile mark. And uh, that'll give us an easy day to Kenosha Pass tomorrow. So that's the plan. to camp about five o'clock and set up tent set up camp in the rain pretty much uh, set up a tarp first waited till the rain died down again and then set up our tents then it really started raining hard that's about the time we were cooking dinner it was so dark because of the clouds I had to wear a headlamp <laughs> so obviously I didn't film all that much but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say goodnight to you from inside my tent and we'll see you in the morning for day seven. Have a good one.
We started at the North Fork Trailhead, went upstream along the valley, nice and flat, over the hill to Long Gulch Trailhead, which was the end of the section. And then we finally arrived at the stream crossing at mile 62.3. Good morning, everybody. It's day seven. All right, now we're off for our rainy day hike, going through a nice open stand of aspen and bristlecone pine with flag flowers underneath. It's really pretty. Okay, we're heading up to Kenosha Pass. We rescheduled a ride into Fair Play for this afternoon at four, so we don't have to camp out tonight. But man, look at this view. This is just awesome. All right, everybody, this is the end of day seven, and we're pooped. We've got our first town stay today, though, in Fair Play, Colorado. And uh, we had a good time at dinner with some fellow hikers, and uh, we're about ready for bed. So we'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. From our streamside trailhead, we proceeded down across the creek to Rock Creek Trailhead and then followed the ridge line all the way up to Kenosha Pass. So we found a great little campsite about three miles in on the trail today, and we just wanted to do a Nero, just get back out on the trail. So this is where we're gonna stay tonight. There's a meadow nearby, it's in the Aspen, there's a creek uh, called Grimsey Creek. Nice, nice spot to camp. Alright everybody, this concludes day 8, a Nero from Fair Play to mile 74.8. And as you can see, I'm already turned in and ready to go to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. From Kenosha Pass, it was a quick 3 mile trip down to Guernsey Creek along a ridge with spectacular views. Even though it was a short hike, it was one of the prettiest days. You can see the dusting of snow on the nearby peaks there. But look way off in the distance. Do you see that out west? Those mountains got hit with snow. Good morning everybody. It's now day nine. All 
right, we're actually starting to encounter fresh snow along the trail here, believe it or not. And it's almost the first, of it's almost the first of July. All right, and here is our reward for getting to the top of Georgia Pass. We're at mile 83.5, or is it 85.3? I don't know, something like that. And here's the peak in front of us. And down in the valley ahead of us is Breckenridge. There's a deer sneaking up on us. Doesn't seem to be bothered by us at all. All right, how's this for a camp tonight? And you know what? It's not even raining. Maybe, maybe we can get our stuff to dry out a little bit. That would be nice. All right, everybody. Day nine is coming to a close. Have a good night and we'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. We started out at Guernsey Creek and began the long uphill journey towards Georgia Pass. We encountered some switchbacks, hit the timber line, and hit Georgia Pass. From there it was a short distance to the Color or to the Continental Divide Trail, and then we followed the two trails downhill towards the Middle Fork of Swan River. It's the Colorado Trail through hike, day 10. chores are done. I ate my dinner. Nathan's already in bed. So I'm going to turn in too. As you can see, it's another rainy night. But we're going into Breckenridge tomorrow. And we can get warm and dry there. We'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. From our camp at the Middle Fork of the Swan River, we proceeded uphill and around a little ridge until we went down to another river crossing. From there, we wound back up the hill to the top of a ridge where I could actually make a phone call out to my wife. And then we proceeded downhill through many switchbacks and some great views of the lake down the mountain. I forget the name of the lake now. 
and kept on going, going downhill until we finally found our camp in the rain at Horseshoe Gulch. Good morning, everybody. It's day 11, Nero into Breckenridge. Come join us. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Breckenridge, Colorado. Here the trail actually goes under a bridge right along the river. Kind of strange, but it's better than crossing the road. We're just hanging out here at the bivy, waiting for our room to be ready. And this is our view. Pretty nice. All right, here is our room at the hostel. This is the king suite. And we have a small bathroom in there too, with a shower. And you might be able to hear Nathan's taking a shower now. But this is pretty nice. We've got, uh, you know, a wardrobe to put our stuff in if we need to. You know, it's not cheap furniture, it looks custom made. Pretty cool. And I guess I showed you the outside where they have the hot tub and fireplace and all that. But we've also got our own little porch out here too. Our own little balcony. See the main deck or balcony out there. And we've got forest behind us for most of it. Pretty nice. I forgot to mention there's a charging station for electronics there too. Hey everybody. I'm here on day 11, closing out another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. From our camp at Horseshoe Gulch, we proceeded west past the Blair Witch Trail to the Swan's Nest, and then we switched back down the hill towards the highway where we hopped on a bus and took it into downtown Breckenridge, and then we walked to the hostel from there. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 12 of my Colorado Trail through hike. Today is a zero in Breckenridge. Come join me. I've spent most of the day at the hostel where my wife came and paid us a visit. Did some repairs on my backpack. I had some messed up straps. And Ended the day with a great meal of scallops at a restaurant nearby. Well, anyway, that's about all I have for today. Very short video. Um, I hope you're enjoying the beauty of the Colorado Trail with me. And I'll see you on down the trail. Have a good one. Hello, everyone. It's day 13 on the Colorado Trail. I'm going from Breckenridge to Copper Mountain. Come on and join me. All right, I have a big announcement for today's news. I have lost my hiking buddy, Nathan. He uh, called it quits and went home yesterday. Uh, my wife picked him up from the hostel. 
So now it's just me for the remaining 400 miles. And uh, I'm really gonna miss them, especially for these next few days. But uh, Nathan, if you're listening, I'm so proud of you for doing 100 miles on the Colorado Trail. Many, many people gave up way before you. So good job. And now I just like to say, um, oh, I've already told you I'm heading from Breckenridge to Copper Mountain and uh, it's about 13 miles. I've got a room reserved in Copper Mountain because it's supposed to rain again tonight. So that's my goal and uh, let's get to it. I'll see you down the trail. Okay, I'm on top of a hill overlooking the range of peaks that I have to cross to get to Copper Mountain today. And they are beautiful. Look at this view. This is a magnificent view. But it's going to be a hard hike. It's already been a hard hike. It's been uh, uphill and through open clear cuts. Yeah, it's been difficult. Here is the Miner's Creek crossing. Okay, I'm up to a little over 11,000 feet now and this is what the trail looks like. I don't know if you can tell how steep that is on camera. It doesn't really show up, but uh, trust me, it's steep. And this is looking back down the way I just came up. It's just an amazing view. I finally broke out above Timberline. And it continues around this way and over to here this is beautiful Okay, this is kind of what I was fearful of. There's a storm over there coming, and the climb's still a pretty steep climb away from here. I can see people hiking on top of the ridge up there. This is gonna be tough. Three sixty degree view from the top. Sorry, it's a bit fast. I gotta get off the mountain. It's clouding up. I don't want to get caught in a lightning storm. There's I seventy in Copper Mountain Resort down the other side of the mountain, and that's where I'm heading. everybody it's the end of day 13 and boy was it an unlucky 13 <laughs> oh my gosh word of advice to future Colorado trail through hikers do not reserve a room at Copper Mountain it's been a long day I finally got a shower I got a burger and a beer 
and uh, I'm just ready to take a bath and go to bed just kind of rest my weary bones for the day so I'll see you in the morning have a good one after hopping on the bus from the hostel I headed uphill from the trailhead and uphill and uphill till I finally met Timberline it was a 3,000 foot climb and then proceeded downhill to Copper River where I took a wrong turn and went about a mile out of the way until I finally found my check-in and my room. Good morning everybody. As you can see I'm leaving Copper Mountain Resort for day 14 of my Colorado Trail through hike and I'm officially two weeks into the hike now so come on and join me. I think this is something that I have never seen shown in a vlog before here. You actually walk under the roller coaster <laughs> on the Colorado Trail here at Copper Mountain. All right, everybody, it's morning update time. Um, yesterday, I went about 14 miles and I've already gone about three or four this morning. I've passed the 120 mile mark on the trail. I'm just trying to take it easy today after the rough day I had yesterday. There's still a 2,000 foot climb today up to the first pass in this section. And then I'm thinking of camping up high. It might be cold, but uh, I don't think we're supposed to get as much rain today. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's about it. We'll see you on down the trail. Okay, to continue my update, yesterday I started and completed section seven. That was the first section I've done in one day. Okay, here's a little glimpse of where we're going. First, it's Cyril Pass. All right, I've broken out above Timberline now, and it's a decent view. Check this out. I think that's the pass I'm crossing. Just beautiful. Ooh, the first snowdrift I have to cross. And it looks to be about eight feet long. Okay, now we have about a three mile section of trail to get to Kokomo Pass and it's all above Timberline. So there should be some good views. All right, here's the view from the top of Elk Ridge. I hope you can hear me over the wind. The mining stuff I could do without, but the rest of it's beautiful. There are views of massive mountains everywhere I look.
right, everybody, it's time to close out day 14. It was a great day, lots of high country, and I hiked about 13 miles, so I can't complain. I thought I was only going to do about 10 or so, I was going to try, but honestly, there's just nowhere to camp up high. So I've dropped back down, I'm about 11,000 feet now, and uh, I'm ready to turn in. So we'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. From Copper Mountain, I went under the roller coaster, up the hill, went over Cerro Pass, and then followed the ridge line to Kokomo Pass, and found a camp along the stream not far after that. Good morning, everybody. It's day 15. Okay everybody, it's morning update time, and I've been on the trail since about 7 this morning. I've got either 11 or 12 miles to go to the Tennessee Pass Trailhead. There I have to make a decision. Do I want to continue or do I want to go into Leadville? Because it's only like an 8 mile trip into Leadville. No cell service for Verizon apparently. So I won't be able to call for a ride. So I'm thinking most likely I'm going to continue on. Even though I'm low on snacks, I've got plenty of other food. I think it'll take me about another day and a half to get through the Holy Cross Wilderness and fight all the mosquitoes through there. That's going to be a big problem. Play two more days and then I will call for a ride into Leadville. I guess that's the plan. I'll see you on down the trail. There's a couple things I forgot to mention in my opening statements this morning. First of all, we're going to be hiking through Camp Hale today, which is going to be pretty interesting. Camp Hale is the old training grounds for the 10th Mountain Division, which operated during World War II. And uh, I believe they pulled off some interesting victories in going across vast distances on cross-country skis and that sort of thing. So some really interesting winter tales of survival and that sort of thing. And they trained right here in Colorado, right up ahead, just a few miles. So, And you'll see the bunkers and stuff. We'll be hiking right past those. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is I've been having some microphone issues. My lapel mic seemed to stop working. So the sound quality is not where I would really like it to be for this vlog, and I apologize about that. Here are the famous Camp Hale bunkers. Not much to look at inside. Okay, that's Camp Hale down there in the valley. And I've come up on a hill going towards Tennessee Pass. And it's kind of a pretty view from here. In fact, somebody built a little bench to enjoy it. Here is the next landmark, the ruins of the old coke ovens.
right, everybody. I've made it to Tennessee Pass Trailhead and the end of section eight of the Colorado Trail. Now it's time to go find a camp spot. All right, everybody. Instead of camping at uh, Tennessee Pass Trailhead, I decided to go on another couple miles here. There's supposed to be water up ahead. And plus, I had some trail magic. I got some trail magic for the third time on this trip. I feel kind of rejuvenated, ready to continue on. And if I go a couple miles ahead, then maybe I'll only have an eight mile hike to the lakes tomorrow. Something like that, we'll see. Anyway, that's what's going on now. So I'm laying here in my tent and I'm really beginning to wonder if this area will live up to its reputation for having lots of mosquitoes. Nah. Okay folks, I'm going to close out day 15 from inside my tent where I'm safe from mosquitoes and I will see you in the morning. Have a good one. From Kokomo Pass, I headed downhill towards Camp Hale, and then up along a ridge, across the highway, through a little valley, past the Coke ovens, to Tennessee Pass, where I had some trail magic, and then I hiked a few more miles to the creek. Good morning, everybody. I'm on day 16. Just a really quick morning update. Um, I'm heading towards the Holy Cross Wilderness and there's a set of about three lakes up there that I'd like to camp around and explore and photograph. So I may even do some side trips off the trail to do this. Therefore, I'm only gonna hike about eight miles today, which is fine with me. I need a shorter day. I like exploring mountain lakes. That's just my thing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm sorry about this, but I'm just going to make one little quick rant. I don't normally do that. I like to stay positive on the channel. Common sense dictates that if you're coming in to camp at close to midnight, do not camp next to other people. Do not shine your headlamps in their tents. Come on. All right, rant over. I'm happy. Let's get on with the hike. It's been a long, rocky, hot, mosquito-y climb this morning. This is what the bike packers are missing out on here in the Holy Cross Wilderness. Because bikes aren't allowed. It's very pretty. I'm up on top in the Holy Cross Wilderness now, and this is just like a little garden spot. There's flowers everywhere, views everywhere. This is really pretty. I'm just really, really enjoying this right here. Bear Lake and this is a beautiful spot. Um, it appears that I'm the only one camping here so far, but it's still early. Um, I'm glad I moved off the trail. Um, too many people have been camping way too close to me. No chance for solitude. I'm hoping here I'll have a much better chance. So uh, here it is. 
It's beautiful. Behind the lake there is Galena Peak. And I am seeing these weird little balls in the water that are like moving around. I have no idea what they are. Look at this thing too, this is weird. It looks like a stick, but it's walking. I'm having to do the closing scene again because I screwed it up outside. Now I'm just gonna have to do it in the tent because I'm already in here hiding from the mosquitoes. So, I guess this wraps up day 16. Have a good one. From the creek I went uphill past the garden spot and ended up at Bear Lake. Good morning everybody. It's day 17. It is such a beautiful morning. Just look at that reflection in the water. The sun's starting to paint the mountains. And I'm still the only one here at this lake enjoying this. This is amazing. This may be a once in a lifetime moment. Okay, everybody, time for morning update. So I changed my plans. I decided not to stay at Bear Lake another night. Um, I could see most of the lakes on the trail coming out anyway, and I did that and photographed them already. So I'm making a beeline for town. <laughs> I'm heading to the Timberline Lake Trailhead where I've got a ride lined up because I got self-service on top of the hill. And uh, it's time to go into town. In Leadville, I stayed at the Delaware Hotel. It was rumored to be haunted. everybody that's it for today so from Leadville Colorado I'll say good night and have a good one from Bear Lake I went back to the trail followed it past a couple lakes up over a ridge and then down to the Timberline Lake trailhead where I hitched a ride into town to my hotel Good morning, everybody. It's day 18, a zero day in Leadville. Come join me. Okay, everyone. I made plans for a pickup at uh, 7 to 7.30 tomorrow morning to take me back out to the woods so I can continue hiking from the Timberline Lake Trailhead. Today, I just had a relaxing day, probably the first relaxing day of the trip. I didn't have videos to upload. I had everything done. I got some chance. I got a chance to get some rest. That's been much needed. So I'm going to be ready to go tomorrow. And I hope you guys are ready to join me. I'll see you then. Until then, have a good one. 
Good morning, everybody. It's day 19. everybody I made it out of Leadville and now I'm hiking through the Mount Massive Wilderness and I'm planning on doing a 13 14 mile day something like that I feel really good today had a good rest in town I'm just ready to maybe make an attempt on Mount Elbert tomorrow that's the plan let's get to it Well, there's Mount Albert. I keep getting peaks of it through the trees. And hopefully that's where I'm going tomorrow. Okay, everybody. Here is the creek that I am camped next to. This is Half Moon Creek, but it's a pretty stream and it's a great campsite. So I think I'll leave you here, say goodnight for day 19, and have a good one. I was dropped off at the Timberline Lake Trailhead, and I just kind of followed the side slopes of the mountain all the way down to Half Moon Creek where I camped. Good morning, everybody. It's day 20. Good morning everybody, it's time for my morning update. So you may have noticed I am not climbing Mount Elbert this morning. I changed my mind. Um, the first thing that caused me to change my mind was a windstorm and some drops of rain that came down at 3.30 in the morning. And I was scheduled to wake up at 4 in the morning to start climbing the mountain. So I took that as a sign that maybe the weather's not as stable as it appears or as they forecast it. The second reason is I'm kind of behind schedule on miles. It's day 20 and I've hiked about 170. I should be at around 200 at this point. And then for the second half of my hike, I want to average about 15 miles a day. So, you know, I need to start picking it up. I feel good with my decision. I'm gonna keep on hiking. And my first destination will be the little town of Twin Lakes, where I wanna pick up some lunch today on the trail. That'll be kinda nice, a little burrito or something. There's a little store there. I can get some snacks if I want. There's also a food truck I think I've heard. So, We'll see what there is to eat, and I should have a good lunch today. And then after that, I want to hike around Lower Twin Lake and uh, maybe camp on the far side of it. It'd be nice to camp right next to a big lake. So that's kind of the plan for today. Let's get to it. There was a big rocky climb earlier this morning, but now the trail's nice and smooth. Closer to Twin Lakes, we're starting to get into more Aspen here. Very pretty. Pretty active beaver area. All right, 
that everybody i'm actually off the ct right now and i'm on the twin lakes cutoff trail um this part by twin lakes is probably about the only part of the ct that i'm gonna miss a section of because i don't want to go back up the hill back to the trail just to pick up where i left off when you can just use a cutoff let's head down to twin lake caveman strikes again with trail magic and it's a hot day it's much needed thanks caveman all right everybody i just got done with lunch in twin lakes and i'm hiking around the lower twin lake and when i get to the south side i'm going to try to find a camp spot everything's going according to plan i'm feeling great here we go Everybody, I guess this does it for day 20. I'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. I would have to say that Twin Lakes was one of my favorite places to camp. I even had the chance to practice some night photography while I was there. It was spectacular. From Half Moon Creek, I hiked around the perimeter of Mount Elbert till I got to Twin Lakes at lunch, then went around Lower Twin Lake till I got to camp. Good morning, everybody. It's day 21. I'm still right next to the lake, but I have made it to where the Collegiate West and Collegiate, Collegiate East divide here. So it's final decision time. And I think I'm gonna go with Collegiate East. That way it's easier to resupply. I'm getting low on stove fuel. And also less people are going this way. Collegiate West is prettier, but you know what? It'll always be there. If I want to come back next summer and, and do that side, then I can come back next summer. Collegiate East it is. So I've been climbing a moderately steep slope up away from the lake a little bit. Nice views of the lake. I noticed it's starting to get really smoky. There might be a fire nearby somewhere. All right, everybody. It's morning update time, and uh, right now I'm at mile 185. I'm planning to go to about mile 197. It's going to be a tough day, really tough climb at the end of the day, and a tough downhill. We'll see if I can do it, but I need to start making more miles. Pretty nice view from here. It's 10:30, and I believe that's the river I'm going to stop at for my lunch. It's just five or six miles to the next camp. Okay, now it looks like I'm coming out to a very hot south-facing slope. <laughs> but there's a nice view anyway. Too bad it's a little smoky. There's quite a nice little view of a lake down there too and some ponds. Bunch of geese over there by this pond. I don't know if you can see the pond, there it is. 
pretty cool to see. Okay, I took a nice hour long break here at Clear Creek down at the bottom of the valley. And now it's time to start that 3,000 foot climb. Oh joy. There's the trail I hiked down before lunch on the opposite mountainside there. All right, everybody. I've made it into the Collegiate Peaks Wilderness and I've just finished the 3,000 foot climb and I'm heading a thousand feet back down behind me. And uh, there's some pretty mountains in the background, but uh, I'm almost to camp. I hiked up the hill, down to another creek, up 3,000 foot climb, and then down to Pine Creek. Good morning everybody! It's day 22. Okay, morning update everybody. My plan today is to get 12 miles to the next trailhead. Um, along the way, actually right before I climb to the top of this ridge, I'm going to hit the 200 mile mark um, and that's about it. I'm going to decide whether or not I need to go into town from the trailhead. So here we go. I'm getting close to the top of the ridge now. Great views but so smoky unfortunately. And I'm about Five tenths of a mile to the 200 mark. Two hundred miles, baby. campsite tonight. This is kind of cool. It's an old 1800s cabin. And there's some old gnarly bristlecold and pine here. Yeah, now that tree's got character. And I'm camped near a stream coming out of the meadow with this view. That is awesome. All right, everybody, we've come to the end of day 22. Have a good one. From Pine Creek, I followed the mountainside around and down to North Cottonwood Creek, and then followed another little creek up till I found my campsite. Good morning everybody. It's day 23 and I'm planning on taking the Nero into Buena Vista. Come join me. folks starting the morning out here with an 800 foot climb 
As the air quality started getting worse and worse from smoke, I started to miss my family more and more. Miss my garden, miss my dog. I got a ride into Buena Vista. There I got a motel room. All right, everybody. It's about time for me to turn in. I would like to say good night from Buena Vista, Colorado, and I'll see you in the morning. Have a good one. From the old cabin spot, I did a Nero into Avalanche Trailhead, where I hitched a ride to Buena Vista. It's day 24. Here's a good view of Mount Yale. And you can kind of see the pass we climbed over yesterday down that way and then down to the trailhead. And then I've hiked up this way today about three or four miles. Really pretty country in here. It's hard to record on camera how very steep it is. And I think I'm almost to the top of my climb today. And it should level out, stay fairly level all the way down to Mount Princeton Hot Springs tomorrow, or even a little bit downhill. Um, there's some thunder going off in the distance. It's cooled down and clouded up a little bit, which is kind of nice. Still smoky. Can't do anything about that, but uh, it's been a nicer hike today for sure. I have more energy. The climb's easier. Um, I'm looking forward to the next couple days to get to Monarch Pass. little viewpoint knob looking at uh, the gut hook app and I I'm feeling pretty good today and I looked at the mileage to Mount Princeton Hot Springs it's only six more miles away which means I've probably already gone about six miles or something like that I'm gonna get there today I think I'm gonna try maybe they have a room open or something maybe I can get another bed tonight that would be pretty cool I'm gonna go for it let's do it Okay, I'm traveling through a deep dark forest of uh, pines and Douglas fir right now. And it's just, I just like to say that I'm kind of glad I took the east route because I'm enjoying traveling through the forest. Alpine's nice, don't get me wrong. The views are spectacular and it's a little more photogenic, but being an old forester, I'm, I'm really, you know, taking a trip down memory lane hiking through the forest. So this is pretty cool to me. Can you hear all these ravens? They've been kind of following me on the trail or else there's just hundreds of them because they've been all around me for like a half an hour. I guess the ravens are my friends today. Looks like I'm on the road walk now, down to Mount Princeton Hot Springs. It said the Cottonwood Creek Trailhead was 17.1 miles. I don't think I've walked that far today. It's, that can't be right. <laughs> road walk in the rain. I'm just getting down to Mount Princeton Hot Springs. Okay, the rest of the day here has not gone so well. I got into Mount Princeton Hot Springs, went 
to go get my wallet out of my fanny pack and it's gone. So I'm stuck here with no ID, no credit cards, no cash. I have a feeling my hike is over. I had to hike about four extra miles to get to the top of a little peak, a high point. Call my wife and let her know to cancel the credit cards and all that. So, looks like she's coming to pick me up on Thursday. I've got 20 more miles to go on the trail. I'll get to Monarch Pass. And that's it. I'm going home. I'm so sorry, folks. This is like the worst thing that could have happened except getting injured or killed or something like that. And it just makes me feel stupid to lose my wallet. How can I do that? You know? I don't know if it's ever happened to any of you before, but uh, this is the first time it's ever happened to me. <laughs> and what a time for it to happen, of course. But I've got a good wife. She's taking care of things. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt her schedule. Yeah, I'm camped just down the mountain here a little ways. So when I get a call back from her, I'll get back to my camp and maybe get some sleep. I bet you thought this video was over. Oh, heck no. Okay, another update. Someone found my wallet. And they didn't, they didn't spend anything on my credit cards. They actually called the credit card company and let them know that they had my wallet. So my wife called them. They left their number with the credit card company, apparently. He's going to leave my wallet at the police station in Buena Vista. So tomorrow, I'm heading back to Buena Vista <laughs> to get my wallet back. And then I'm going to make a decision there whether or not to stay on the trail. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on here. I thought I'd keep you updated. It was an interesting day, to be sure. Man, I have got to say that this day keeps getting more interesting and more interesting. Um, I'm up here basically on top of a little ridge between some of these big mountains. I don't know if you can hear the wind howling. It's still kind of raining. But it's pretty stormy out there. And some of those gusts of wind sound pretty major, like maybe 50 miles an hour. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. But uh, anyway, life keeps getting more interesting. From the Avalanche Trailhead, I followed the trail to the roadwalk down to Mount Princeton Hot Springs and then to the top of the climb at mile 233.8. The next morning, I hurried down the mountain into Buena Vista to get my wallet. I saw some deer along the way, and it was a nice little hike. In Buena Vista, I decided to end my trip there, and my wife came and picked me up. And we stopped by this interesting little campground that had an alien theme on the way back. We didn't stay there, but it was interesting to visit anyway. In the end, I may have been a bit disappointed that I didn't finish the entire trail. But in the process of putting this final film together, I realized what a great trip it really was. The absolute beauty of the Colorado Trail cannot be denied. I captured memories in my mind and on film that will last me and hopefully my son a lifetime. In fact, the thing that I am proud of the most that happened on this trail is the amount of maturity and confidence that my son gained on this trip. That was priceless. Now I leave you with the most memorable moments and the best pictures from the hike. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate each and every view that I receive. Thank you.